Okay, we've got some goodies from Buran Nicole. Matt, I know what this is. <laughs> that, I believe, is a candle refill pot. So that's where you put your wax and make your candle. This is the pot. There's the lid. Isn't that gorgeous? It's a flower. And there is the pot itself, like so. Now, there's some fun stuff in here as well. Some little cork bases. And then there's this, which I had to ask them what the hell it was. And apparently it is a thing for centering and keeping your wick in place. You put your pot on top of it and uh, put your wick in and that will hold it in place. So I'm having to glue it into the bottom of your pot first. Isn't that clever? Because it's just magnets. So we're going to give that a try. Now, as you know, I'm no candle maker, but we'll give it a go, you know. <laughs> uh, right, we've got a sealer application tool. Ooh. Interesting. Oh, okay. So it's a brush, a sponge brush and a pot. Okay, I'm liking that. Very simple. Good. But I usually use their wax. So what gives? Ah, oh, okay. Seal and shine kit. What's this all about? Let's get this box out of the way. I think I've got everything out of it. Seal and shine kit. What's this then? Professional sealers and mica powders. I've not seen this before. I love their packaging. Isn't it lovely? Oh, sealer. What do you do? What do you do? Spoon. Right, I'm going to need my glasses. <clears throat> Clear the surface, move, remove dust, pour some sealer in, mix it up. Oh, that's just for the sealer itself. Give it a stir, brush it on. Right, okay. Well, metallic glossy finish. Basically, you do the same, but you add a little bit of your mica into the sealant. Well, that sounds easy, doesn't it? Right, we're going to try this. Watch on if you are in, as intrigued as I am. Now, what we're going to do, we're going to get, we're going to make ourselves a candle. We're going to make ourselves a pot and then we're going to try this. We're going to put that shiny finish on it and see what happens. Interesting stuff, eh? Right, let's get sorted. So the pot, the first thing I'm noticing is instead of the clamps, we've got one of these fancy new magnetic casings oh i say that's even easier than the clamps superb do you put the uh i think you i think i've done best by putting the little mold in first up this way getting it nicely positioned snapping that around it then giving it a wiggle that's the easiest way to do it flip it over give it a wiggle again and it drops into place so as we've got that funky mica powder kit, I'm just going to do the pot in just plain white. Now, obviously, Boo and Nicole do make their own eco casting powder. And if you like the two part types, then um, then by all means, give that a try, because I found it to be very good stuff. Personally, I prefer eco pour. I just find it easier. So we're just going to do this in pure white eco pour. And then we will play with that sealant. And then finally, of course, we make our candle insert to go inside it. Kind of a three-parter then, this one. The pot, the shiny finish, and then the candle. Right, let's get some eco pour mixed up. So anyone who hasn't tried eco pour, it's a beautiful white casting powder. And rather than being the two-parter, it is just add water. And that is because they've taken the part that is normally in the liquid and they've put it into the powder. So you only need water because it's already got that reactive agent in it whatever that is so i'm going to mix it in this little bowl it might be too small and i'm probably going to regret it so as you can see i'm mixing it quite runny today uh, if you're going to want a marbling effect then you'll want to mix it thicker but i mix it it's a little bit thinner so it's like uh, quite watery you see it's about like cream i suppose um I tend to use it this sort of thickness if if it is for pots because then it degasses best. If I was after the marbling effect, then I would mix it that bit thicker, and then you the colours stay put more. So here's the lid. This takes quite a lot. Now what I'm going to do is give it a little tap and a wiggle because there are all those angles in there where all the petals um, end. So we're going to do that. 
Then we're going to pull the last bit. And the other thing we're going to want to do is just get around, just go under the lip here with a stick. And that's just to make sure we've not got any bubbles trapped. And what I tend to do is lift this edge, lift the inner edge, and that will just release any bubbles up. Now, because I made this quite watery, it will take that bit longer to cure. I'm just going to do the same with the other pot. I tend to use these little whisks nowadays and a tin bowl. You could use a plastic one, use anything really. Um, simply because I saw Claire's Crafty Corner using uh, small whisks and I thought, well, that's a really good way of mixing it up, isn't it? Just give it a bit of a tap and a wiggle. What you can do as well is pick it up from underneath. A bit of squish from underneath. You can see I'm squishing it up. I'm just going like that with my hands underneath. Yeah, I saw Claire's Crafty Corner using the whisks and thought that's a darn good idea. So I set about getting me some. And the little bowl um, just means that you don't get... There aren't any corners where you can't get with your whisk. You know what I mean? So you don't get any... There we are. You don't get any awkward edges. Right, I might have overfilled that slightly. I'm just going to lift a bit of that out. Anyway, there we go. Other than that, that is uh, that is done. We're going to just leave those and I will be back to demold them shortly. They take about, well, probably half an hour. I'll leave it a bit longer to be on the safe side. But about half an hour, I should be able to demold these theoretically. So it won't be much longer than that. See you later. I'm going to do something with this in the meantime. Don't know what yet. <laughs> Right, let's get these demolded then. Um, I had a bit left over, so I chucked it into one of my fairy door moulds that I made years ago. <laughs> get it out. Oh, let's see. As you can see, Eco Pour is plenty strong enough to be quite rough with it if you use it for the sort of thicknesses it's intended for. Gosh, I don't know if I can get this out. Oh, here we go. <laughs> Ta da! <laughs> little fairy door. I'll paint that sometime. Okay, let's have a clean up. I've had a bit of a clean up already. Let's get these out and we'll have a proper clean up. Um, right, here we go then. No, oh, I've got most of the bubbles out. Oh, isn't that gorgeous? I did get a couple of little bubbles around the edges here, but I'm not too worried about that. It's lovely anyway. It's beautiful, isn't it? Right, let's have a go at this one. So this is the actual pot frame out the way. The frame is just to stop the, the mould from going out of shape um, basically. It's the most beautiful soft silicon. Well you can see how soft and squishy that is. Look at that. It's incredible. It's food grade apparently. Oh that's lovely. You know what I like that just as a bowl on its own. But yes so because it's so soft and squishy those frames are just they're just amazing. They keep it nice and rigid so it doesn't go, it doesn't wiggle out, you know, wiggle out of shape. I've had some moulds, even whether they're cheap, whether they're posh, whatever, they go out of shape if they're a bit big and chunky. That is just fantastic. I love it. So I actually just like that as a bowl on its own. That is a beautiful little bowl. Okay, I'm going to clean this little tabletop up and we'll have a go with this, uh, this coating, ceiling stuff, whatnot. So I think what I want to try and do, we've got some different colours here and it's almost like a, a brush on varnish stuff by the look of it. Shake well before use, we've got a little measuring thing and we've got a light pink, gold, blue, pearl gold, that rose, that's got to go on that rose hasn't it? So shall we do the whole thing in, is this just shimmer, pearl gold? Uh, yes, and then we'll do the um, pink around the tips. Okay, we've got a plan. So, giving it a good shake, as it said. We'll put a couple of little pots and let's get a brush. So there we go, a couple of nice soft brushes. So, I'm going to put a little bit in each. It's quite thick. I don't know how much I'm going to need. Uh, okay, that much. <laughs> lid back on so this is a gloss sealer because normally I just go straight in with the wax but let's face it that would be difficult to rub wax into wouldn't it so let's see what this goes like and of course this is a new 
I don't know if it's a new product it's certainly new to me so let's see what it goes like so the pot itself I'm just going to do in the gold and the rose will do gold and then we'll fade to a bit of pink tinges around the tips how does that sound people so this is what the little spoon's for i guess oh these foil tops they drive me insane necessary i suppose but you know and i suppose you could use any mica powder with this but we'll use the ones that are provided and i don't know how much of this to put in let's just go for a little tiny bit because i just want a bit of a shimmer i'm gonna stir it up with my brush well, that's nice that's subtle actually got a bigger brush here so let's maybe do this coat with the bigger brush hmm nice yes i bet you could use any mica powder to do this i did get a few little bubbles around the bowl look you could sand it if you want to be fussy but i actually don't mind a few little bubbles around the base i think it gives it a little bit of interest oh that's nice it's just like a sheen I suppose, I mean, if you put more layers on, it would become a gloss. I'm not going to. I rather like this just subtle sheen. Now, I did leave this, I left this about three or four hours, actually, in the mould. Um, so hopefully a lot of the moisture has dissipated out of it. It's way longer than it needed to be before I demoulded. But um, I always think you need to let the moisture out before you seal. But I'm not going to seal the bottom, which will hopefully let the moisture carry on coming out if there's any in there still. If given a choice, I, I tend to leave it a, like a day before I seal. But obviously, I'm cracking on with it because I'm making a video. But can I suggest if you do something similar, yes, do leave it a day first. Just let that final like, moisture come out of it. Let it really firm up. It's in the strength, you know, fully build up before you do anything with it, really. This one will just be for me, so I'm happy to take the risk. But look at that, isn't that nice? And it's absorbed in, so it's drying really fast because it's obviously a water-based varnish. And the pot is absorbent in some shape or form. That's nice. Can you see that? It's just given a soft sheen. Very nice. Let's do around the rim as well. Looks like I'll have to mix a bit more of the gold up. It's very slight. I mean, I suppose if you put a lot more of the powder in, you're going to get a much more intense colour. But I'm happy with just this very subtle effect. Also, you want to be sure that it's sealed thoroughly. A second coat wouldn't go amiss anyway. A good way of making sure you haven't missed any bits is going around with a second coat. There we are. Right, just gonna I think I've got just about enough to do that in there. A little bit more in the bottom. There we are. That's a bit starting to feel dry already. Right now the rose. So I'm gonna want some more gold. I think the rest of the lid's gonna be gold and then we'll go on to pink on the on the rose itself does that make sense might blend it up a little bit i don't know that might be a bit tricky we'll see because i'm just thinking this stuff does dry quite quickly of course we've got the candle pot to make the candle itself to make next haven't we i've not i've normally when i've had these pots i've actually made the candle straight into the pot but we've got this little mold to do an actual proper candle refill so we're going to try that And again, I'm not going to seal the inside of this lid. Um, I'm still worrying about letting that moisture out. <laughs> so I shall seal the inside of the lid. Just give it a coat of this after. And I'll do that tomorrow. There we are. Right, let's get this pink going. Now I'm going to need a bit more pink than that, aren't I? It's weird. It's almost jelly-like, this stuff. <laughs> Clean the brush off. My little scoop. This is the easy way to remove these tops, by the way. Sharp knife. <laughs> and just go around. Then you can peel. Like so. Again, I don't know how much colour I'm going to want in this. So, oh, isn't that pretty? That is such a delicate pink. <laughs> okay. You know what? I might do the bottom of the pot in it too. 
fact, let's do all of the inside of the pot. This might be a mistake. Gosh, this pink is so pale. I think that's going to be a bit too pale for the flower. I'm going to put a bit more colour in, but it's rather nice. It's giving it like a, a colour washed effect going over with that second coat with the colour. Hmm. Giving it just that little bit of warmth. Nice. <laughs> Right, yes, I'm going to put a bit more colour in that because I don't think that's uh, anywhere near enough. So let's put a lot. Particularly, I suppose all we're doing is making a pearly pink paint, isn't it? So let's uh, let's get in here. You can see I'm going out towards the outer edges. Hopefully that'll give it more of a petal look than if I just go around like that. I'm going to leave the underside. Oh no, no I won't, it's too messy. I was going to leave the underside white but it looks like that might be a bit too messy. So if you want to make your eco casting powder of whichever sort you, you use, pearlescent, metallic effect or whatever, this clearly is a good way to do it. What a great idea and this varnish is lovely. That is so easy to use. I'm impressed. Well done Bo and Nicole. Great new product. I take it this is new. I've certainly not seen it before, so I presume so. Okay, so what I'm finding is go fairly sparing on your brush because it gets messy otherwise. And then make sure you do your final strokes in the direction you want any brush marks to go because you are going to get brush marks. I just think that's gorgeous, don't you? Now, what I am going to do when this centre is dried, I'm going to just put a little bit more on there. And I am going to get another coat of the pink inside the little pot. I want it to kind of, I want it to look hand painted though. So I'm going to leave it sort of kind of, yeah, I think I'm going to leave it like that because it looks kind of colour washed. And I think that's an effect I quite like. It's got that luster to it. Yeah, I'm liking this stuff. It's great. Right, what we'll do next then, I'm going to leave this for a good long time to dry out and then we will obviously we're going to then be going in with our uh, making a candle so I'll see you for the candle making phase and at that point this should have dried up properly so we'll have a proper close look at it in the meantime what do you think isn't that nice and that was so easy it really was that's drying out I still feel a bit of cling to it I might put another coat on there not sure yet We'll see. Right, I'll see you later. Tidy ho. To this point, I've had a rough idea what I was doing. Um, this is the bit where I get totally clueless. Though. Most of you will know I don't normally make candles. I've had a couple of feeble attempts in the past. Haven't done it for ages. Anyway, I've got my little stove out. I've got some soy wax pellets and I've just checked my temperatures and made a note of these are the temperatures to do stuff at. And uh, this time I have got a thermometer because I hadn't last time. I've got some dye. I've got some smelly stuff. And I've got a wick. And I've got that little plate. How magnetic is it? Oh, yeah, very magnetic. Oh, that's good. So that goes under there. That's neat, isn't it? In the middle. And it's let me wick up nice and straight. Oh, well, isn't that clever? That is the simplest idea and it's just genius. Right, I'm going to get some wax melters and we'll take it from there. So this little stove I got off, off Amazon, it's only, it was out of a little starter kit. I got tins and all sorts of things with it. And um, apparently you're meant to put a bowl of water on here and then the, um, then the stands in the bowl. So I'm going to go and get me a bowl and get some water. Yeah, apparently putting it in water stops it sticking, stops it scorching or something. Anyway, I'm going to uh, heat that up. Uh, hot to put it on. Anyway, let's have a look at the little bowl while we were doing this. This still feels slightly clammy. I think it needs a bit longer to, to cure. But I don't know if you can see that slight gold sheen. And then it's got that lovely pink painted blush effect on the inside. And the lid. Well, it's lovely. Where I got pink where I didn't want it down onto this section. I just went round with the gold again and it just came away. So I haven't yet put that extra coat of the pink in the centre. In fact, I think I might just leave it. Isn't it lovely? Let's pop the lid on. And that's just beautiful, isn't it? Rather old fashioned and adorable and lovely. Anyway, I'm going to put this out of the way while this all heats up because obviously 
Um, yeah, I don't want to wreck it. <laughs> so let's put it somewhere safe. Well, this is what I don't like about doing this. You end up with this horrible sizzling noise. I don't actually know where my metal spoon's gone either. Let's see if I can find it. Nope, I can't find my metal spoon. So we're just going to use a wooden thing because uh, clearly I can't use plastic. Might melt. So yeah, note to self, I need to get myself another blooming spoon, which is really annoying. Now I don't know whether this is going to be on too high, too low, but people did tell me you shouldn't keep stirring it while it's melting. And I just can't help myself. So <laughs> it's going to happen. Oh dear. And you know what I forgot while we were painting that uh, those pots? The fact that it came with an applicator set for the uh, coating. Oh well, I'm going to put that now in with the um, nice the pot. I'm going to put the little brushes in with the kit so I don't forget next time. And these are the bases for the pot, I presume, which is a nice touch, isn't it? Proper little cork bases. Right, now you don't want to stand and watch this melt, do you? I do, because I'm sad like that. But I'll be back with you when it's melted. Oh, I'm going to stop poking it. Right, OK, catch you in a bit. So this is nearly melted and I'm intrigued to see how hot that is. So I've got this little probe thing. There you go, it's set to centigrade. Oh, look, it's reading quite high and I think that's because it's doing right by my pot. What is that right now? Because apparently I want to get up to 70 and let it cool a little bit. Interesting, okay. Well, it wipes off easy. So it's pretty much... I think once that's all melted, that's going to be up to temperature. I think last time I did this, I maybe overheated it. And then it, of course, it just shrank when I put it into the, well, there were little tins. So cool to 60 to pour, heat to 70, cool to 60, and then add the additives at 60 to 70. That's what uh, Google said. So that's pretty much melted. So how hot is it? can't see my little thermometer, can you? Yeah, that's at 70 now, so. We are going to turn this off. We're going to take it off the stove and I'm presuming it's going to... Oh dear, this is... I shouldn't be trying to do this in such a confined, confined space, should I? It's probably not wise. <clears throat> I'm trying to film. Um, so, we've got to let that cool a little bit. I'm guessing it's going to cool quite quickly. Let's try my little temperature probe thing again. Try not to put it on the metal because I'm guessing the metal will be hotter. So it's still still heading for 60 rapidly. Oh, I don't know, it's slowing down already. Gosh, that's really cool, cooling that fast. Right, it's at about the 60 mark now. So let's get our colour in. I'm going to go for a pink. And these are some resin dyes that I bought from somewhere. I've got some little uh, heart-shaped ice cube moulds here as well, just in case I end up with too much. I should know how much of the smelly to put, but I don't, so I'm just going to tip some in. I need to really make notes on all of this, don't I? Now, is that going to be pink enough, I ask myself? A bit more. I have got some of the, the wax block type pigment as well, but... I just thought, I'm used to liquid pigments, this will be easier. <laughs> right, we're going to just pour it in. Folks, let's do this thing. Somebody I'm sure is going to tell me why I shouldn't use wooden stirrers. Because I bet that's a thing. I bet you're not supposed to. Oh, I've got a bit in there somehow. I don't know. Oh, oh of course there's wax on the, uh, on the wick, isn't there? And I bet it's melted the wax. Okay. I'm just going to fill these all up and I'm going to stand here and... <clears throat> And hold this until the uh, until it stiffens up a bit and the uh, I can let go of the wick. At least I know because of the clever gadget that it's stuck to the bottom in the right place. Now I have got a thing for holding this bit in the right place as well. But never mind. I shall stand and hold it for now. Right, I'll see you in a bit and we'll see what colour this goes. So I got fed up holding it and, and resorted to using a couple of my plastic skewers to do that with. Right, I'm going to have a tidy up. I'm going to put this away and I will see you later. So I got fed up holding it and, and resorted to using a couple of my plastic skewers 
to do that with. Right, I'm going to have a tidy up. I'm going to put this away and I will see you later. Right, this is probably a bit too early, but it's cooled down so and it feels firm. I definitely should have put more colour in. Anyway, let's see how well it fits in the pot. And don't forget all this lot came from Boo and Nicole. They um, make the moulds, they make the, they, you know, they provide the magnet thing, the, the mould for the refill, the mould for the pot. It all goes together so you know, you know it's going to fit. And so there we are, a finished candle pot with a replaceable candle. I've put the candle instructions on the bottom to make sure nobody burns the house down. And I think we're done. But what a lovely gift that would make for someone. Pity it's gone past Mother's Day, isn't it? I might save that for my mum for the next one. <laughs> No. Anyway, thank you very much to all those who subscribed. If you'd like to subscribe, remember it's free. The button is down here. And thank you for all your comments. I do love to read all of your comments too. So I look forward to seeing you for the next video. And don't forget, I've put links and discount codes for all of the stuff that I've been using today down in the video description below. All right, I'm off to take some photos just to finish this video up. Some nice close-ups for you. And I'll see you soon. Bye. Just mixing up some more wax to do this again. And uh, yeah, I've just realised what I forgot. I forgot to put the base on the little pot. So I should be doing that before I take the photos. Mm -hmm.